welcome to the 14th lecture of graph theory and uh, so in the last class so we were discussing brooks theorem which uh, tells us that if g b if g is a connected graph mm -hmm. and not complete and not odd cycle. So, G is a connected graph which is not a complete graph or an odd cycle, then the chromatic number is at most delta. The, the, the background was that uh, the greedy algorithm, the easy algorithm of colouring which we discussed namely colour one vertex and uh, pick up another vertex and give it to a colour which is not already used but among uh, if something is available among them uh, uh, already used colours then use it right. This simple algorithm would definitely colour the graph in at most delta plus 1 colours, but the Brooks theorem says even delta plus 1 colours may not be required many most of the time delta colours will be required, but then there are two exceptions namely uh, a complete graph uh, because it needs delta plus 1 colours and uh, odd cycle delta equal to 2 there 3 colours are required. Then uh, if a connected graph is different from these two cases then we can always manage to colour uh, the graph with delta colours this is what Brooks theorem says. The proof uh, we had gone through the proof and then reached almost halfway through. So, the key ideas were like this initially uh, we, we decided to do an induction for small values of uh, uh, number of nodes it was easy to verify that only delta colours are required if it is not a complete node <laughs> or a node cycle. Then we noticed that if uh, suppose an n node graph requires uh, delta plus 1 colours, then it should be a regular graph that means all the degrees has to be del delta. If even one node is of degree less than delta, then uh, the same greedy algorithm would have allowed us to colour, uh, not the same greedy algorithm, but a little carefully if you decided the order of picking the vertices a little carefully we could have colored it in delta colors. So, now the claim that you need delta plus 1 colors uh, tells us that it is a regular graph all the vertices are of equal degree and equal to delta. Now, uh, you picked up one vertex and decided to remove it from the graph. So, this is the vertex V and uh, now look so, the neighbours of this thing, so these are this and then the another observation we made was, so this delta when you remove these vertex V with this delta edges the graph will not get disconnected, it is not possible to have some more than one component because in that case we have a recolouring strategy for the uh, connected components because here we can always uh, it's possible that if I if I look at these colors and then uh, suppose some red color is used here and the blue color is used here I can within this thing I can change blue and red uh, making sure that there is a repetition of uh, red color um, in the neighborhood. So, if there is a repetition of uh, some colour in the neighbourhood that means uh, almost delta uh, minus 1 colours are used, one more colour is left. So, I can extend uh, the colouring of this thing to the this thing. So, essentially the idea was, uh, so if we consider the vertex V, all its delta neighbours, uh, so if you remove that vertex V there is only one connected component and moreover all its delta neighbours should get different colours because if there is any repetition of colour then the number of colours used is only one less and therefore we can extend the colouring using delta. So, of course, we, we also argued why this induced subgraph is colourable using delta colours because 
of the induction hypothesis we had to take care of two cases what if this became a complete graph or an odd cycle that we took care of right. So, now the, uh, the point now is this is delta colorable. So, if even any repetition even one repetition among the uh, of colors among the neighbors would allow us to uh, use the remaining color to the uh, new vertex this vertex and uh, uh, that would essentially mean that we can we can we can do the coloring of the entire graph with uh, just one um, so delta colors right so that would be a contradiction so we can assume that all these colors are different so let's say this is red this is green this is uh, yeah, blue and then this is yeah black so like that so now the next argument we did was uh, suppose we consider the connected components uh, so if we consider the uh, induced subgraph on the vertices which are colored either red or green right two colors if you fix red or green and then if you consider the induced subgraph they will form connected components so now the connected component which contains this neighbor and this neighbor the green neighbor and red neighbor uh, in that um, collection should be the same it is not possible that they belong to two different connected components. Suppose it was like uh, um, if it so happened that if there were two connected two different connected components for instance this was uh, this and this was this for instance yeah this is the red and um, green uh, see the red and green thing so some red and green induced subgraph so here we are not interested in other other colors we only can look at the red and green red and green vertices right so if it so happens that if it is uh, disconnected then what will you do uh, in this component this component i will exchange green with red and red with uh, green essentially all these red colored vertices will become green colored vertex now for instance this will become red green this will become green and the earlier green ones will become red I can do that because uh, this will not affect the the validity of the coloring because if you look at any uh, say red vertex its neighbors will see uh, that uh, uh, see so the change is only from the red to the green if it was a yellow neighbor how does it matter because uh, anyway as far as it sees a different color it is ok for it the red neighbor uh, the green neighbor sees a change but then it has changed its color to green so therefore uh, if you exchange the color of red and green the overall coloring of the graph will remain same so now the effect is that when uh, you did this so this became green so this is already green right so there are two greens on the neighborhood of this vertex v so two greens means there is a repetition in other words red was released red is not used by any other neighbors of this thing so now red can be given to this thing right so red can be given to this thing so this is the uh, effect so therefore we extended the coloring so what what can we infer so this will not happen so we can infer that so if you look at the red green uh, uh, sub, uh, the, the induced subgraph due to the red green vertices is our uh, uh, two neighbors namely the red neighbor the, the red neighbor and the green neighbor they should come in the same connected component should be something like this they should come in the same connected component it is not possible for them to be in two different connected components so yeah, it can be something like this right so it is not possible for them to be in two different connected components now we wanted to study the connected the next step is to study this connected component of red and green right so when i say red and green it is any two colors in fact i am picking red and green for the purpose of uh, explaining so it can be blue and green also so they sh they any two color if you take they connected component with respect to that uh, two color uh, the color classes if you if you look at uh, the connected form components formed uh, by the only those vertices uh, which are colored blue and uh, green uh, one of the connected components will contain both this 
uh, vertices then which are the neighbors of uh, this new vertex v which are colored red and green right so so this is the situation so now uh, let's uh, uh, see how this connected component will look like no, because it is fully connected. So, how, the first question was how many, so if you look at this red neighbor, how many uh, green neighbors can it have? Can it have a red neighbor? No, red, the red vertex cannot have any other red neighbor because it is a proper coloring. Now, it can have green neighbors, but it may have several green neighbors. That is the first uh, feeling we get. But then we argued that it is not possible to have more than one green neighbor because if you look at its degree already one edge is going back to our vertex v so now only delta minus one neighbors are there for it which are already colored in the graph and now two of them are colored uh, green means there are two extra colors one of which is red which is already given to this thing but one more color is there i could have changed it to that color right so say maybe i usually use this blue to indicate that right the f the 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 uh, one extra color which is available. So, if such a color is available, so I give it to that. So, what is the good thing? So, the good thing is that you uh, have released that red. Red is not anywhere else, right? So, the red will go to again red will go to here, right? Now, we we again uh, say that suppose uh, yeah, you see it's, it has only one neighbor. It, it does not have two neighbors, right? it is only one neighbor and then we argued that this one neighbor can have only the same kind of argument um, this one green neighbor if you look at its uh, red neighbors can it have several uh, red neighbors it cannot have any green neighbor but can it have several red neighbors but uh, we argued that it's not possible because if it has more than uh, I mean one red neighbor, so this one, two, three red neighbor will come, one back and two new. So total three red neighbors means so out of the delta neighbors, three are same. So only delta minus two colors are used. Uh, so on out of which one is definitely green. So one more is there, maybe blue. So that blue I can give it here. So which essentially means that here I can do an exchange. Uh, because now the red can be made to green without any problem right because it is a singleton component in the red and green uh, connected subgraph. So therefore uh, we could have exchanged the color of this to green and release the red right. This is the point. Now uh, so now coming back to this so we have um, um, so we have continued this argument to say that okay now this will go to red and then this will go to a then this will go to a green hmm, green and then this will go to a, a red right then this will go to a green like that so it's not possible to have more than uh, one new neighbor anytime so it will form a path only it will not be any complicated graph and it has to finally reach here right at any point if you see a uh, see more than one new neighbor you know, of that same color green then that means that three neighbors include one back and then two forward so three of them uh, has the same color and then that means one free color is available other than the color which is already there on the vertex so we can change it so that would uh, allow me to consider this component which uh, so that means this component is not containing the other vertex this neighbor so if i can do a red green interchange in this component up to here which will make this green here at this point so green green will allow me to release the red this was the thing so finally so the argument uh, up to now told us that so if you consider uh, a red green for instance if a red if you consider a red and a green neighbor here so this is green neighbor here so the if you if you explore the red green path there will be a red green path and then it will come all the way here and then it will be like this it will be like a uh, like a path you know it will be like a path okay okay path
now you can uh, see that the argument that we have given for red and green is valid for any pair of colors i could have taken uh, say the black and blue or i could have taken red and uh, uh, blue for instance this could have been like right so yeah, it could have been black and uh, blue right in which case you will see a path going from here like this black like this and then slowly reaching here so with the blue here right or it could have been red and uh, black so then it will happen to be like this right red and black so something like this so finally so it will come like this so so there you can see this kind of paths between any pair of colors in the neighborhood right so two neighbors if you take you see a string here now uh, the next question is so you see several paths here is can those paths intersect of course you say that they are intersecting here this path is intersecting at the beginning and ending they are uh, they are like they are intersecting actually here red black is intersecting here this red 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 black uh, path is intersecting with the red green path in the beginning node here similarly this red black path is intersecting the red blue path in this node so naturally there are uh, several uh, intersecting points this this so uh, so so but then these are only n points right these are only n points but is it possible for two such paths to intersect on a uh, uh, in say in between point that means interior point so the definitely for instance if you consider a red green path it cannot intersect with a say black blue path because the at the vertex suppose it is intersecting at certain vertex interior vertex so what will be the color of that so red blue path will say that it has to be either red or blue sorry uh, bl black blue path will say it has to be either black or blue while red green path path will say it has to be either black uh, red or green so 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 essentially it's not possible to have a Uh, interior vertex which is common to to such paths but on the other hand what if it is a uh, red black path and a red green path now there can be a common vertex probably because uh, what if uh, see because it can intersect at a red vertex right for instance it is possible for it to say this path see this red uh, uh, green path to come come like this and then at this vertex it may be a red vertex here so what will be the previous vertex here it will be a green vertex sorry 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 this will this will be a black vertex so it i'm telling red black vertex and here it will go via black vertex out and here in the other path we will see this red vertex uh, is in fact immediate neighbors are green right it is it's green green now the question is here this black vertex is repeated twice the green vertex is also repeated twice so now total out of uh, delta neighbors how many colors are used on the delta neighbors black is used twice green is used twice so total of delta minus 2 colors are used and this red is one of the remaining two colors and then one more is there so that color we can always you say let's let's say it is yellow so then what will happen so it means that uh, this path is broken for instance if you follow this red green path here it's broken so this path doesn't go all the way to here now this is a connected component of red green by itself this this one so we can exchange uh, this green and uh, red in this path this will become green this will become red and this will become green and this will become red and so on so if i do that what will happen here is a green here is also a green the so green is repeating on the neighborhood of the vertex v so red is released and then red can be given here all right isn't it so this is what uh, will happen so we can uh, we can assume that these two different paths in this collection of uh, n choose two paths right for it, sorry uh, d delta choose two paths any any pair of colors we have uh, a path so they never intersect so they never intersect even if they share a common color it's it's not going to intersect so this is one good observation which we will make use of in the and to conclude the proof now 
again consider this situation now again so this this vertex and uh, look at its neighbors so one of them is colored red say one of them is colored green All right so okay now first uh, we have to find uh, two vertices in the neighborhood such that uh, they are non adjacent right so is it possible that every pair is adjacent but if every pair is adjacent this is already a clique because there are delta neighbors this is a delta clique and uh, along with this thing this is a delta plus one clique so the entire graph is going to be a delta plus one clique right so uh, so we don't have anything to prove in that case so mm, the of if there is some other vertex uh, outside this delta plus one the degree will be more than delta right that will be a contradiction so uh, to the assumption that the degree was delta now so let's say this is the this the two vertices which are non adjacent these are two vertices which are non adjacent now this is let's assume that this is green color this is red color so first we uh, consider the red green path so this is the red green path red red so this will come all the way to like this right this is the red green path so what we are interested uh, in is now see this look at this vertex so this is this is a crucial vertex the second vertex this is a green color right so this vertex is definitely available because in this path however short it is it should have uh, at least three vertices including this two vertices there should be one more vertex this is uh, therefore this vertex exists now we can consider another uh, vertex say there is a blue vertex here this blue vertex uh, uh, between this red vertex and blue vertex we have the connected component right Uh, so for instance if you consider the red green connected components it is going to be a path like this right so um, here this is a red so so this is sorry this is blue this is red so there will be a path like this so from here it will be and this is we know that this is the so this is the um this is the full connected components involving these two vertices and uh, only red blue vertices so because this, there won't be anything going if uh, we had already argued that nothing like this will be there right so this is not possible right so it's just this is a full connected component involving the two now our plan is to interchange the colors red and blue along this path along this path so along this path so we will interchange the red and blue colors what will happen this will become red this will become blue this will become red this will become blue and finally this will become uh, blue this will become red and this will become blue see this will not help us much because here uh, the earlier argument will not work that we can't say that there is a repetition of colors on the neighborhood because the earlier it was red blue this was blue uh, red blue now in this thing red is here blue is here so that is not going to help us but so what is going to help us is the fact that the uh, if you consider these vertices none of these vertices are affected because this path is going not going to intersect the green red path right the original green red path will be intact up to this point this entire green red path will be up to here it will be safe so it won't be changed at all because of the blue red interchange so it so happens in particular that this vertex will still be green this vertex will still be green because nothing has affected this but on the other hand if you consider the blue green path now what will happen this is blue so the blue green path has to contain the second uh, the, the nearest to a text uh, 
uh, which is green in the in it right so this will essentially contain the uh, so it will it will go like this right the uh, blue will come here and uh, it should go somewhere to somehow reach here right it, it it should but so essentially what has happened is there is a sharing of colors uh, he, sorry sharing of vertices by the blue uh, green path and the green red path now blue green path and the uh, red green path now namely this vertex this was a contradiction why is it a contradiction because now if i look from this vertex it sees uh, uh, uh right it, it, it so we we have this uh, thing that because now there should be one more red going out of it right because it has to finally reach the red colored vertex somehow it has to reach here sorry this is the red colored vertex now right it has to reach here somehow so fi finally there should be a red going out of this somehow so it should see two red in its neighborhood like this and then also two blues right so total delta minus two colors only are used and one of them is definitely green another will be there maybe it's a yellow one so this yellow one will allow us to break this path this entire path here i can interchange red and green this on this path on this path means this path up to here this path i'll be able to here here i'll be able to interchange the red with green and uh, in that interchange this green will become red this green will become red right this will become green and like that so here is a repetition of colors green and uh, red and red in the process we have released the uh, the green color and then that green color can be used here right so it will it will allow us to extend that will be the contradiction so finally this uh, this gives us the final contradiction that means we have shown that whatever it is it has to uh, allow us to um, uh, release a color from this thing so that that ends the proof to repeat the main ideas so the proof uh, we wanted to show that the entire uh, graph with the uh, maximum degree delta can be colored with uh, delta colors if it is not a complete graph on delta plus 1 vertices or an odd cycle i mean for delta greater than or equal to 3 uh, this odd cycle case is not there right so the first we observed that it has to be regular so that means uh, and also then we observed that if you remove any vertex the remaining has to be connected then uh, moreover all the delta neighbors should get different different colors i mean del all the delta colors should, should be used up then we explored between any pair of colors uh, we considered the connected components formed by the uh, in the induced subgraph of those two colors alone the two vertices of those two colors alone and this connected component which contain these two vertices which are in the neighborhood of v should be in the same it uh, should be same that means they cannot be part of two different connected component in which case we would have exchanged the colors red and green in that uh, particular one of the connected components and we would have got a repetition of colors in the neighborhood of v so therefore they should be in the same connected component after that we told uh, we will explore uh, what is the structure of a connected component which contains these two red and green neighbors of v and we saw that it has to be a simple path starting at uh, the red neighbor of v and ending at the blue neighbor of v right it should be a simple path red green red green red green path and this argument is true for any pair of colors out of the delta colors you have delta choose two such pairs for any uh, pair of colors this is true so therefore um, uh, the next thing we did is whether these paths can intersect or not we saw that the paths can only intersect at the end points it can never intersect in an interior point and then we did this final trick namely we found out a non adjacent pair say we call it red and green be the let it let red and green be the colors given to this non adjacent pair now we uh, located the second vertex in the red green path starting from the red vertex and then after that uh, this color is going to be say let's say it is some uh, another color so 
so it's it's it, so its color is green okay, red, red green path right and now uh, we located another color say blue and then we interchanged the blue and uh, red in the red blue path right in the red blue path which means that uh, the original red green uh, path was unaffected so in particular our vertex vertex uh, which uh, we noticed earlier was still green so therefore the uh, that earlier red green path should contain that vertex and also our new blue green path will also contain that vertex because now blue is the earlier uh, the blue neighbor of V is now the earlier red uh, neighbor. So, that is this green neighbor is uh, in that uh, it is adjacent. So, therefore, the path the blue green path should contain that vertex. So, a blue green path and a red green path is uh, sorry uh, yeah a green red path is uh, containing the same containing as uh, vert common vertex. So, which is a contradiction. So, by our this is this is how we concluded the proof. So now, um, okay, this this finishes the proof. So now the question, the next question we will address is this. So we can um, see that uh, uh, the chromatic number uh, is able to affect some parameters. For instance, here it says that if the chromatic number is high, the maximum degree has to be high. So similarly, what other things can we tell about it? For instance. Uh, so, what is it that causes chromatic number to be high? So, for instance, if you cannot uh, color a graph with few number of colors, uh, small number of colors, what can be the reason? So, the, the initial guess for anybody probably would be that. Uh, so, if there is a clique, complete subgraph in the graph, original graph then you cannot color it smaller number of vertices. For instance, if G is this graph, right? And then if there is something here which is complete, so this is a complete subgraph. You know, th this complete subgraph itself will require so many colors. Suppose if there are, there is a KT here, then T colors will be required in this itself. So, how can we color the entire graph with less than T? So, it is a very natural initial guess to think that probably the complete subgraphs in a given graph is the reason for the number of colors to be high. It is true that if there is a complete subgraph, uh, large complete subgraph, the large number of colors are required as uh, if KT is there, in fact, T number of colors are required at least. But then uh, is it actually the only reason why the chromatic number is high? For instance, is it possible that we do not have any complete subgraph for instance see any graph there will be a k2 that means an edge will be there uh, if it is not uh, a set collection of isolated vertices. So, let us say we do not have a k3 in the graph k3 means a triangle suppose the triangle is not there is it possible that then the chromatic number will be low. So, that is what our initial intuition told the complete subgraphs the presence of complete subgraphs may be uh, causing the chromatic number to be high. Now, we are asking this question, is it possible that, so there is a graph with no K3s in it, no triangles in it, but still the chromatic number is very high. So, is it possible to construct such a graph? It surprisingly turns out that it is possible to construct such graphs also. So, let us uh, see the this example. So, this is let us say for one vertex, right, it is true. So, then uh, let us say this is a uh, so this is a two colorable k2 right this is no triangle but then it needs three two colors now the third one see so you can see that this pentagon so this is the pentagon so this requires three colors this is this chromatic number is 3 g is equal to 3 here but uh, uh, it doesn't have a triangle right it's a triangle free graph without uh, so, which requires three colors, right? So, this is the first example. Now, how do I get uh, a triangle free graph which requires four colors? So, I am looking for a graph with chi of g equal to uh, four and uh, triangle free and triangle free. So, this is the way we construct it. So, we take the pentagon 
so this is 1 2 3 4 5 so this is 1 dash 2 dash this is 3 dash this is 4 dash and this is 5 dash now uh, this I will connect 1 dash to all the neighbors of 1 that means here and here and then 2 will be connected to all the neighbors of uh, 2 that means here and here and then 3 will be connected to all the neighbors of uh, 3 like this and 4 will be connected to all the neighbors of uh, 4 the 2 and 5 and 5 will be connected to all the neighbors of 3 so this is uh, and then we will introduce a new node here and everything will be connected to this so how many nodes here so here 5 plus 5 plus 1 11 11 nodes so uh, the the it's it's e easy to see that here we don't have any triangle and also we we can show that it requires four colors so in general suppose we get a graph with the uh, chi of g equal to k and triangle free if you know that uh, if you know that g is of chromatic number k and that is triangle free then how do you find a g dash such that chi of g dash is equal to k plus 1 and uh, g dash is triangle free to this is the the we are repeating the the pentagon kind of example what we do is we just take g da, g here to construct g dash what we do is we take a g and then let's say this is 1 2 3 up to n this are the number of vertices and we just introduce 1 dash 2 dash independence of it, 3 dash up to n dash so this is a copy of these vertices in some sense but then uh, no edges here in this set right so now uh, this one will be connected to all the neighbors of this neighborhood will be n of one right the neighbors of one dash will be essentially the neighbors of one here so here so here it is the same neighbors of uh, the, the whichever one neighbors one is connected the same thing it will be connected so for instance two is connected to this this two dash will be connected between one and one dash there is no edge between two and two dash there is no edge but the uh, for instance if x is a neighbor of 1 x will be a neighbor of 1 dash also here right this is the way it is constructed now you will introduce after this connections we will introduce a new vertex and connect it to that uh, clearly this is not going to be a triangle uh, sorry this graph is not going to have any triangle first of all there is no triangle involving this vertex because this is an independent set and then if at all there is a triangle which uh, involves say one dash then uh, you can see there is this neighborhood there is an edge and then this instead of one dash if you use one right here then here itself there should be a triangle right so which will be a contradiction to the fact that g was originally uh, a triangle uh, free graph g was a triangle free graph right so whatever triangle we get in g dash involving some one dash so there should be a triangle in g involving one so therefore it will be a contradiction so this is the uh, reason why it is triangle free now the next question is why why is it key chromatic why is its chromatic number k plus 1 have we ensured that the chromatic number has increased uh, first it is easy to see that it is it can be colored with the uh, k plus 1 colors because here we have only k colors right now what will be the color of one dash same color as one because one uh, its neighbors one's neighbors is the same as one dash neighbors and therefore if one has no conflict with its neighbors one dash can share the same color because one and within one and one and one dash we don't have any edge we can sh one dash can share the color of one similarly two dash can share the color of two same color and 3 3 dash can share take the color of 3 and so on because their neighborhood is same so there won't be any conflict and between them there is no edge now 
you see that you can always use a new color for uh, this last vertex and that will make it k plus 1. k plus 1 colorable, but then how do I show that it cannot be colored in less colors? Suppose it can be colored, suppose g can be colored in uh, less number of colors, right. So, this is 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash etcetera. Um, then so, you see suppose it is k color colorable using k colors, it, uh, definitely it cannot be colored in less number of colors. Now, you see if you take the coloring in this part alone that this is g right, this is g, this part alone the coloring is essentially uh, a k coloring of g, but this k is its chromatic number, we cannot color it with less number of colors. So, you can consider any color class, for instance you can consider the blue color class here. So, these are the blue color class here, blue colored vertices here. Now, what can I tell about the neighborhood of these vertices? Of course, the neighborhood, no other blue vertex will come in the neighborhood. Now, I can say that at least one among them should be such that its neighborhood contains all the other colors other than blue all the other colors say if you are using red, green, yellow, uh, violet all the possible all the k colors k minus 1 other colors we used here should appear in the neighborhood and with this blue it is all the k colors right. At least one, one vertex should I am not saying that every blue vertex should be like that at least one vertex should be like that. Why is it so? Otherwise, what we can do is suppose some color is missing here in this thing. Suppose say we have black color missing here. I could have simply made it black, right? I could have made black, no conflict. And uh, this here also for everything if it if something is missing, I could have in the neighborhood some color is missing, I could have converted uh, that vertex to that color, moved that vertex to that color. And uh, because uh, these are independent, right? They will not, this change of colors will not affect them each other. So, uh, that would have been a valid coloring. So, with one less color because we are replacing each blue colored vertex with a some other color right. So, therefore, uh, from the remaining set of colors. So, so, so it so happens that uh, the, 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 the it is not uh, uh, it is it should be it is because it is not possible to color with k minus 1 colors it should be the case that at least one vertex should resist the this attempt to reduce the number of colors used. That means, there should be at least one vertex uh, blue vertex such that in its neighborhood all the remaining k minus 1 colors have appeared. Uh, now, if this is true for blue color, it is true for say yellow color also, it is true for uh, red color also, whichever color is used in the k coloring, uh, this is true. For instance, there should be at least one vertex of that color uh, such that in its neighborhood uh, all the um, the all the vertices are um, uh, colored with the remaining. Suppose this is colored, this is such a black vertex. So, definitely this is 1 dash. So, it is so of case 1 dash no connection here, but then this its corresponding uh, vertex here is also connected to its neighborhood. All the k minus 1 remaining colors are uh, used up. Uh, all the k minus 1 remaining colors are used up in its neighborhood. So, it has to reuse the same color as this one namely the black right. So, of case not no, this connection is not there. So, similarly, uh, the the blue colored what a special vertex we whose uh, the neighborhood is using all the remaining colors its partner in the this site uh, should definitely uh, have uh, have to use the same color as it because in the neighborhood because its neighborhood is same and all the other colors have appeared in the neighborhood it will have to use the same color. So, it so happens that all the k colors will appear in this place in this set in this in this group also. And now this k has to get a new the new vertex the final vertex has to get a new color because all the available k colors have appeared in its neighborhood. So, it should get a k plus 1 there is no other way. So, it requires k plus 1 colors. So, that is what uh, we can infer. So, so this is uh, interesting construction called my seals 
Lockean construction. So, uh, which uh, tells us that there are triangle free graphs uh, which requires arbitrarily large number of comma. So, in other words you give me any uh, any uh, number k then I can construct a triangle free graph which whose chromatic number is at least k this is what it says. Uh, now okay, there are other uh, graph constructions also which will sh which can show the same thing, but there is an interesting result uh, that for instance uh, so what about uh, so in one direction is it is saying triangle free suppose if you do not even allow a 4 cycle, 5 cycle suppose the girth of the graph means girth means the shortest cycle of the graph has to be greater than k will it probably uh, allow us to infer that the chromatic number will not be arbitrarily large for because for instance if you look from one node if the girth is large so it will look like a tree in the neighborhood vicinity at least up to girth by 2 distance it will grow like a tree so is it possible that so because the trees are too colorable uh, it locally it looks like it is it only very sm small number of colors are enough to color such a graph but uh, then uh, but is it possible that such graphs can also be of arbitrarily high chromatic number so this result from approach is interesting for every integer k there exists a graph g with uh, girth greater than k and chromatic number greater than k you can you can uh, get both these parameters girth and chromatic number, which uh, intuitively looks contradictory but uh, both can go high arbitrarily high any value of k if you put you can get a graph maybe it is big graph but uh, it, you can get uh, a graph with uh, both the values both the parameters having value greater than k so now so the the final final thing today is uh, um, something about k constructible graphs so what is a k constructible graph so this is like uh, in the connectivity case we told uh, uh, so, all 3 connected graphs can be constructed in this way. So, like that is it possible that for all k chromatic graphs the graphs which there is some such construction ok. So, we cannot uh, hope for a construction uh, for all uh, k chromatic simple construction, but what we will say is that if you if you look at uh, a k chromatic graph a graph which requires at least k colors to color then there should be some structure in it some substructure in it which will uh, which will uh, which will require so many colors sorry which which can be produced in certain ways that is that is this essential idea of k constructible graphs so what is a k constructible graph so a class of the class of k constructible graphs are defined like this so the complete graph k k is k constructible. So, complete graph k k is k constructible and then if uh, g is k constructible and x y is element of v j x y uh, 2 vertices in v j are non adjacent then this non adjacent vertex vertices can be kind of um, identified together they can be contracted. So, what it says is g plus x y contract then contract that x. So, so we can we can look like look at it like this. So, suppose this is a graph. So you have, and this is a k constructible graph. And then suppose you find out x and y. So that there is no edge between them, right? So there are some neighbors. So now we can just pull them together. So the thing is, you put this edge and contract, or otherwise you just collapse them together, right? So that's what it says. So then what will happen? So we'll get a vertex so together here with all the neighbors yeah some common neighbors may be there but uh, you can always drop the multiple edges if you don't like so if you want a simple graph right so uh, then if you do this operation then it will still be k constructible and uh, uh, suppose you are given two k constructible graphs g1 and g2 and there are uh, there is a common vertex for them x so they have just one common vertex and one common vertex x and y, y1 and y2 are such that 
x y 1 is an edge of the first graph and x y 2 is an edge of the other graph. Then g 1 union g 2 um, minus x y 1 minus x y 2 plus y 1 y 2 is k constructible. So, it looks like this. So, suppose you get So, if this is a graph g 1, this is a k constructible graph and there is this vertex x and this another graph. This is the only vertex which is common. So, this is x, let us say x and this is g 2, this is also a k constructible graph. Now, we have a y 1 here, this is this edge is present here and then there is a y 2 here, this edge is present here in the g 2. Now, and of case this edge is not present right because this y 1 and y 2 are not uh, part of the same this edge is not present. So, then what we say is we put this edge and uh, remove these edges. So, this graph is also k okay, constructible together it is also k okay, constructible. So, uh, so, this the, the graph class of graphs which can be constructed by these operations by repeated application of these operations are the k constructible graphs. Now, we can easily see that. So, uh, any k constructible graph uh, is k colorable right. So, which its chromatic number is k it requires k colors to color. So, the, the reason is it is by an induction because the first complete graph k k requires k colors and now suppose any smaller uh, so the so if you are doing it by an operation sequence of operations at an earlier step we just assume that it is k chromatic. So, so now uh, if you consider the second operation namely this operation so you can yeah so here this operation you can easily see that is is it possible that uh, the 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 chromatic number decreases so if the chromatic number decreases by this kind of contraction operation when the non adjacent vertices are contracted then why you can always go back and use the whatever color is there for that contracted vertex you can use it for both vertices right because anyway they are non adjacent so then the same color will work both of for both of them in the original one because the neighborhood anyway is different the colors on the neighborhood is different is not it. So, therefore, uh, we can we can infer that the by this second operation it is not possible to decrease the chromatic number if you do the if you decrease it then the original also has. One. Similarly, you can uh, consider the other operation g 1 g 2 the the here also if you see suppose you decrease this operation um, here also. So, the when you uh, here it is only k colorable for instance you drop these edges remember these two edges were dropped and this was put right. Now, you know because of this edge this color and this color is different right one of them should get a color different from that of x for this entire graph right. So, this color and this color is different then you can put back this edge suppose without loss of generality and now look at this graph alone with the so, so this entire graph has a k uh, less than k coloring. Now, x got a color with respect to that y 1 got a color with respect to that and y 2 got a color with respect it is possible that y 1 and x have the same color, but it is not then it is not possible to have y 2 and x to have the same color because y 1 and y 2. Uh, have different colors uh, only one of them can be the same as x. Now, in that case it is uh, clearly uh, x and y 2 suppose they have suppose they have different colors then even if you put this edge then we do not have any problem right because they have different colors already and other colors whatever was there with respect. So, we are only using k colors for this thing it is a contradiction because we told that this requires uh, g 2 and g 1 required more than k color. So, we can infer that so, by this operation also it is not possible for the number of colors required to reduce right. So, this k constructible gra table graphs are definitely k, uh, k chromatic I mean they need uh, the chromatic number is greater than equal to k, but now we will say that any uh, uh, graph whose chromatic number is greater than k is considered there should be some subgraph in it such that uh, it is uh, it is 
uh, it contains a k, k constructible subgraph. So, to we will we will do the proof in the next class. Yeah, so, so this class uh, we will conclude this class with uh, this much. Thank you.